welcome back to Murphy's Law Garage and today I bring you part four of how the diesel Bronco was built before we had a YouTube channel so without further ado let's jump right into it now in the last episode we watched the video of the 7.3 firing for the first time inside of the frame we're going to continue on now with the body coming down back onto the truck let me wind this up so we can see it a little better now let me tell you sketchy so these straps here are holding the body and of course they're the kind of strap where you pull the little mechanism and they pop loose and they just come straight on down on you and that's how we brought it down we literally broke these straps loose a pair at a time dropped the body a little bit latched it back in tight again you can see here we ran a piece of rope as well as with a come along in the back of the truck as a an emer with a chain fall actually I believe as an emergency stop in case something went wrong um, right here you can see the body spacer pucks have been put on here now this was an absolute requirement because even pulling the body off and sitting the motor in the clearance between the transmission and the trans tunnel is extremely tight um, these are actually some solid aluminums here and then right here you can actually see this is the F-250's uh, fuel filler neck there's actually <coughs> and this repair is still functioning to this day the hose that goes into the tank here is not an extremely common part and it would have taken us a while to get to it we needed to get the body set down so this has actually been uh, rubber taped uh, very very tightly right here because there was a tiny tear in it and then there's a pair of hose clamps over the top of it and it's never leaked but here's the diesel filler neck <clears throat> and this is necessary otherwise you can't fit the diesel pump nozzle into it and I've actually heard of guys doing diesel conversions and forgetting all about this part and not being able to put diesel in their vehicle to move forward a little bit here you can see that the uh, this is actually backwards the body is sitting up a little high but you can see that all of the painting has been done where the body needs to come back down here as well as the painting underneath the truck here where the frame would get in the way of it this is the body sat all the way down <clears throat> and you can see the very large amount of clearance we have now here between this and the firewall you can see where that trans tunnel starts to pitch back down over here and how it gets very close to the back of that valve cover and it's even worse if you could see the transmission right here but this picture really doesn't show it well <clears throat> all right this is the body <clears throat> for the first and last time sat back down on the frame with the 73 power stroke in here sitting all nice and cozy here's a rear shot of it you can see we've actually in this one the rear lift has been put in so the rear of the truck is all perched up real nice alright and this actually displays a problem that began to happen while we were working on the truck this nose I don't know if you can tell is actually now that the fenders on it is pointing down a little bit in comparison to the rear of the truck and how tall that was let's back up again you see how high how large this gap is and now we go up to the front how collapsed this is well I'll explain this later but just remember this gap right here alright and something else you're you're looking at right here <clears throat> this is the cross member let's see that was for the F-250 and if, maybe let me think about that this might actually be the Broncos cross member anyways we had it in here just for testing the fitment of the fenders and we immediately ran into a problem and that is that this cross member was not going to work one to hold on to the fenders but also for the headlights to fit and we needed to be able to fit in the big radiator that belongs here which wouldn't fit inside of the diesels so hence this happened so this is a brand new core support for a Bronco that we bought because the one that was on the truck was all rusted out down here and it hurt David's heart but I cut the wings off the side of it and this is the F-250's core support I cut the wings off the side of it 
and then took the wings from the Broncos core support and welded it on to the F-250's core support so that it could hold on to the fenders. Now, this was a little challenging. I had to float the fenders in here so that uh, we could make sure this all lined up properly, so and so forth, but it ended up being no, re no real big deal. Once I had it cut, I went back in and see this is some really, really light welding, just kind of holding it in so I could tweak it and make sure it was all straight. And then I came back in and heavily welded it. You can see I've come back with a flap disc and made it nice and smooth. <clears throat> and another issue we ran into with the amount of lift we have, uh, especially with these large coils that were necessary to hold the, the heavy weight of the diesel up, is the sway bar was sitting up too high and it was in a bind. Now they sell kits to do this, but we had a welding machine and the skill, so I actually fabricated some sway bar relocations. Now they're, they're not beautiful or anything, but they did the job. So here you can see that the core support, and you can't even really see it uh, where I cut it and then welded it back together again, is all painted real pretty now. You can see that the sway bar relocations have been complete and the sway bar has been remounted. And then now the fenders are on, not quite fully aligned just yet, I can see from this picture. But the fenders are on, the core support is in, and you can even see the F-250's radiator hanging out in here. I've already got it test fitted. Alright, in this picture David had gone in and he couldn't help himself. <laughs> And I needed to know as well, just to make sure that the work I'd done to core support would work out, because I never tried the headlights in this front fascia. Uh, only trusted the fenders, which was a dumb idea. Just got lucky and it worked out for me. You won't need to worry about that, because you can see this video. But he put all of this back in. <clears throat> you can see that David came back and actually pulled these off and painted them, and then put them back on. He's got his custom grill here. All right, so this began what is most likely the bigger part of the nightmare, and for what the like the majority of the questions I get about the diesel Bronco is how did you do the wiring? Now, if you were doing a brick nose uh, to an arrow nose like we did with the the wiring, a lot of this mess is kind of self-created because we had to adapt those two generation of harnesses to talk to each other. But if you were arrow nose to arrow nose, 98% of this you just throw out the window and you can quite literally use the harnesses over again. Uh, you can strip the harness of the Bronco and use the F-250's complete harness into it. Now, other than the rear tailgate glass, which is something you'd have to work in there, but that's no big deal. Um, in this case, you can see here that I believe, look, you can see these are the power cables for the F-250. So I've got the F-250's... Uh, engine, uh, not the engine management, but the engine bay harness laid out right here. And what I've done here is I've deloomed it to expose all of the wiring. <clears throat> and I'm uh, going in and I've got some Windex and I've actually um, cleaning these wires up, looking for breaks in them and uh, deciding what they are and whether or not they should stay here. And I've actually cut, you can see this bin is full of wires that I've cut out of here to wildly simplify this. Because all we need, because we're keeping the Broncos in engine bay harness and body harness, all we need in here is the engine control stuff. Alright, so what you're seeing here is the uh, Broncos harness, and let me skip forward one note. The Bronco's harness has also been stripped open, laid on top of this, and everything to do with the engine control for the Bronco has been removed and stuffed into this bucket. And you can see here I've got all of the wires following each other to where they need to go. I've got grounds where ground should be. You can see these are all little relays and the connectors where they should pass through the firewall. You can see I've got my Windex here that I was cleaning up with. Got all my looming materials and solder, so on and so forth. <clears throat> Here, this this was a unique, a unique issue. Um, we didn't want the wheels to have to stick this far outside of the body. Uh, it just happened to be the tire and offset combination that these smaller wheels were. They really they were all up on the brake lines after the lift. So we ended up putting spacers on the truck to push them out. But this setup did not stay. Now you can see this is the the driver passenger side. 
here I have the harness all taped up everything is where it belongs and I've taped it together I haven't loomed anything in and this is just so that I can uh, lay it in the engine bay and get it all lined up next here you can see that I've actually taken this harness and I've laid it into the engine bay and uh, the fuse box is sitting right here. I've got the harnesses actually tucked and running under all of this where you can't see it. Here's a battery tie down area and a battery tie down area. Alright, sorry y'all. Had to deal with the baby. He woke up. I'm gonna have to wrap this up for tonight in a little bit, but this picture has a lot to talk about. You can actually see here that the hood release has been installed. Uh, all of the wiring for this side of the motor has actually been complete. You can see the start relay has been put in, the coolant overflow, the washer tank is in, all of the AC lines are hooked. You can see how nicely this is loomed and taped. But all we have here is all of this wiring sitting here completely loose and unloomed. Right here is a picture I took just to display how anal I am. You can see here only the 1%. This has been staked, soldered, and heat shrunk to ensure that it's protected and this connection will never fail. Oh. Alright, <laughs> this floor. So, this right here is David about to jump rope with a piece of wire and I told him he couldn't do it, but he did. But y'all, y'all sit back and enjoy this. Wool says he can jump rope with that piece of wire right there. So uh, let's see what kind of skills he's got. It ain't happening, bro. I hadn't done this since I was like six. No, no, I get the hell out of here, bro. <laughs> Anything you want to say about that? Drop the mic. It's hilarious. That piece was so much shorter than he was tall, and he still managed to do it. Impressive, David. You can see the old 5.0 is still sitting right here. <laughs> All right, people. I'm not going to put the video of JV trying to jump rope. But let me just tell you, it's funny. Alright, let me get off of that. That's making a lot of noise. Uh, that was David making fun at my horrid attempt to jump rope. To be fair, I wasn't good at it ever previously, so. You can see here we've got a, a brand new battery sitting in the hole. You can see all of these AC lines are in here, loomed and taped. And this may not look much different, but this is actually had more wiring consolidated and brought forward. You can see it's much more tightly taped now. Alright, right here you can see that we've actually put a seat back in. Now these seats are still in the truck, but they will not be the forever seats for these trucks. You'll be seeing the update, the upgrade to these seats uh, in an upcoming video on YouTube. All right, so here's a good bit more having been done. You can actually see here the horns laying right here. The horns ended up down here below the headlights. You can see the fuse box has now moved and it's more in an upright position. It's near where I ended up leaving it. You can see how heavily taped in these wires are and how consolidated they've become. And you can even see that they've been connected through to the firewall here in some instances. Let's see, I don't really see too much anything else. Yeah, it looks like it. All right, this is actually the three inch downpipe that we put on. So we got rid of the Ovate downpipe and we actually put in this uh, three inch round. Here's the difference between the two. Here's the pancake and here's the three inch. And this is the intercooler we bought for the truck. 
So the 96 F250 is non-intercooled, and that leaves a lot of power on the table, especially for how hot it is in South Louisiana. So here's the intercooler kit that we have here, as well as here's the other performance mod we got, and that was a Hydra tuner. All of our tunes were done by Poor Boy Diesel. Right, okay, so this is the last video I'm going to leave you all with for today before we move on to the next part. And that is, in this video, the 7.3 starts for the first time. So all the wiring has been connected through here. It's going to start for the first time with the body on and its harness fully integrated into the engine bay. Um, you ready? It does. On its own wiring with its own batteries. It's almost tidied up over there. A little less spaghetti. Once that's all bracketed up and zip tied, all we gotta do is get rid of the mess inside the dash. This is next. All right, so you see there uh, how much more of the wiring had been completed, how neat it was looking on the driver's side over there inside the engine bay. You also notice that when the motor was running it was a little rough and clacky. Uh, that eventually is obviously no more longer a problem, but it, we attribute it to the motor never getting up to operating temperature at, at, at this point and possibly some air bubbles still trapped in there. And this is where I'm going to leave you with a teaser of the next video. Some more fabrication going on here. Well, anyways, thank you all very much for listening to me explain to you all the building of the diesel Bronco before there was YouTube. Uh, God bless. You all stick around for the next one. Uh, all of our social media is linked down below as well as the link to the photo album where all these pictures are. Thank you all very much. You all have a good one.